Well, good morning, beloved. This is your girl, Sharon, once again from my front seat. And here I am giving God all praise, honor, and glory for what? For a brand new day. It is Wednesday. God is gracefully taking us through the week. And for that, we ought to be glad. So I made the 430 bus last night in Bible class. Okay. Um, we studied Mark chapter 9. That very last verse, it says like, and of course, paraphrasing according to Sharon, you have salt inside of you. So therefore, since salt is inside of you, you ought to be the one to bring peace. You have salt inside of you, therefore it's up to you to do what? To preserve the situation. What am I talking about? Oftentimes we'll get upset one with the other. We've got to come to realize that when dealing with our sisters and our brothers in Christ, the same God inside of you is the same God inside of them. Or the same God inside of me is the same God inside of you. The same God inside of you is the same God inside of me. Why? Because we're all sisters and brothers. Now, we may have a different makeup or this or that or whatever the case is, but that same God in you is the same one in me and vice versa. So what am I talking about? Oftentimes, we may have differences, but when we come to realize, wait a minute, we're worshiping the same God. Wait a minute. The same Holy Spirit in you is in me, so therefore, we should be able to work together, come together, and there ought to be peace. Why? Because you got Jesus in you, I got Jesus in me. Why? You have salt in you. I have salt in me. And salt is a good thing. It's a preservative. Hmm. Preserve that situation. Let there be peace. So this morning I'm on the 430 bus and I am reading Proverbs, what, 13? Because it's the 13th day of the week, of the month, right? So it starts off by saying that a wise son listens. However, the scoffer does not listen. A wise son. So that person who's wise, they listen, they take instruction. Whereas you may have a scoffer, they're not listening to anything, don't want to hear it, have no thirst for knowledge. So beloved, we have a choice. Are we going to be wise like that wise son or are we going to be a scoffer? Because that wise one who listens, great is their reward. That scoffer who does not listen, they ain't going to find nothing but destruction. Then a verse says, those who eat well, their lips, their mouth, speak well. If we're speaking well, then we're going to eat well and be just like what? That fruit of life. Why? Because we're careful, we're mindful of the words that we speak. However, the foolish eat nothing but violence. That's it. That's it. Another verse goes on and it says that, I sort of scribbled this morning, but the wise person does what? They guard their mouths. We don't just say anything. See, I'm professing, I'm wise. You profess that you wise too. Why? It says they guard their mouth. And as we guard our mouths, we do what? We preserve life. But then it lets us know that those who say any and everything are going straight down the road of destruction. So which one is it going to be? We must guard the things that we say. So as I was reading one of the commentators on the bus this morning, uh, the commentator writes that, of course, we know, and it's interpreted this way, that God has given us two eyes, we can see, two ears, we can hear. However, he's given us one tongue, and then that one tongue has a fence around it, and that fence around that one tongue, it's what? Our teeth. So we should do what? We should speak a whole lot less than we listen. So we should listen a whole lot. Be able to see, have vision well, listen double than what we speak. So perhaps God wants us, you've heard the saying, he wants us to listen twice as much as we speak. And then that tongue, which no man can tame, guess what? It's behind the fence. That fence is what? The teeth. 
So God is letting us know the one who guards the mouth as we are mindful in the words that we speak. We're doing what we're preserving life, ours as well as the life of others. So let's not be that one who says just anything. Oh, I used to be like that. If I thought it, I was sure enough going to say it. How foolish is that? Don't you know we kill people with our tongues? It makes us look like a fool. We may think, ha, 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 I got you. But there's someone looking bigger than you and I. And they're like, mm, how foolish is that? And then one day we grow, we get a little older, and then we realize that was quite dumb of me. So beloved, let's listen twice as much as we speak. Then it lets us know that, um, oh, see, I got to quit scribbling. So one of the verses says that there are those who makes himself rich he ain't got a whole lot. Mm -mm. She ain't got a whole lot. Those that, and it's nothing wrong with working hard and saving your money. I'm not talking about that. But I'm saying there are those who it's all about money, 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 money. Money. They don't care who they hurt. They're ruthless. They cannot think straight. Their focus is on, I got to get this money, got to get this money. And they mean trying to get money. Says that person right there really doesn't have a whole lot of anything. They don't have very many friends because let your money run out. Them folk going to be gone. Why? Because they wasn't ever your friend. Um, let the stock market crash. Lord, now you can't get out of bed because you don't know what you're going to do. You got all this money, yet you have no peace. You have no contentment. You just have no joy. But then the scripture says there's one that makes himself poor, and that person has a whole lot. Well, who's going to make themselves poor? So that's interpreted as the one that because of their spiritual priorities... And they tend to their spiritual priorities. So they don't have a whole lot of let me go out to the club money. They don't have a whole lot of, yeah, we can go shopping and go eat out. Why? Because I got to give my tithes on Sunday. Why? Because we have such and such. Why? Because I have spiritual obligations. Why? Because I need to tend to the poor. Why? Because I need to do this. I need to do that. That person, the Bible says, the one who makes himself poor, they have a whole lot. And there are many rewards that that individual will We'll reap here in this life and the life to come. You know what I'm about to say? Let me get off this phone, get my oatmeal heated up, cut up my little old banana, get my breakfast, go get my walk on so I can get upstairs and render unto Caesar those things which belong unto Caesar. And if it be the Lord's will, we will meet again on tomorrow. From where? From my front seat by way of the cafeteria. This is your girl Sharon. I'm out, y'all. Deuces.